Welcome everybody, Time Tuesday. We have had a number of requests for jig style streamers. So uh, we talked a lot about it at the office here and we've got some cool ideas coming your way. Uh, this is the micro meat whistle. So we took the idea of John Barr's great meat whistle and made it a smaller version. So the meat whistle, if you haven't seen it, is a larger bass style, um, big, bigger fish streamer with a nice cone head on it using rabbit. We adapted a couple materials for the micro size here, uh, but a fun little bug to tie and to fish. And the first thing we have going into the vise is the super jig head from Wapsi. So like I said, this is a variation off of it with no cone head, just the lead head in this version. And then we're gonna start some thread. I have some Danville's 140 denier in the purple, nice rich purple here. And we can just give a quick coating to the shank, clip out the excess and walk to the barb. And that'll be our starting position. First thing we're gonna tie in is some Crelax. And I use this for the underbody wrap. You could substitute a few things, some different flashes. I like the red paired up to the purple here. Makes for a good contrast. A nice overall color combination. So we'll tie that in and leave it sort of hanging off the back here. Got a couple come out on me, so let's get them all in there. And there's a few different lengths and, and thicknesses of the fibers and the Crelex. So we're tying in a bit of a mix. It helps kind of create a little bit of that modeling texture to it. So from there, we're gonna add in the pine squirrel. The pine squirrel being a good option for the downsized version of this fly instead of the rabbit. Rabbit would be just a lot to kind of work with, I think. But I like this to be two lengths back. So we got our first measurement there. And then we'll take that, transfer it back. Leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room, but hoping that that's where that's gonna be tied in. We'll clip it out. And then we need to determine how we're gonna puncture this to tie it in as well. So again, leaving just a little bit of wiggle room on the front side, making sure you're coming far enough out the back. And you're gonna identify this position where the shank comes around and turns into the, the bend of the hook. And so I want to puncture the hide right there and slide it around the back. So trying to get it right in the middle, it can be a little tricky on a hide that's so narrow, get the thread out of the way, get it past the barb, and then we're gonna take it up and we're just gonna leave it sort of hanging out, waiting for us on the back end there. Now that we have that in place, we want it, again, sort of out of the way. If you have a little clip or something that you can clip to the vise, that helps a lot right there. I'm just gonna have to maneuver around it today. All that hair out of the way, and then start making our wraps forward. On the Crelex, trying to keep it together, but if it opens up like it did on me, that's all right. You just sort of want to wrap over top of it halfway as you go forward. That'll help make sure that you're getting it all covered. Don't have to be too neat and pretty, just want that red pop underneath. And then we can grab all of that material and secure it in behind the bead. And then we'll save the rest of this Crelex. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna flip over my hook and the vise. So I like to flip the vise first, take the hook out, flip the vise back, make sure that hides underneath. And then we can come in and re-secure our hook in the vise. Go. Now we're gonna work with our pine squirrel a little bit. We want it coming off the bottom there, 
We want it up against that flash. You don't want to leave a gap or anything like that just for a nice clean tie. Pull it forward and then we're going to lay it on top. And we want all the hair going backwards. I'm going to, except for the amount that I'm going to pull forward to separate and expose a little bit of that hide so that I have a decently clean tie in point, just like so. A couple on top, a couple in front, it's gonna help it sort of stand up just like so. Then we can clip out the excess. And I am gonna use, this is actually probably not quite enough, but if you had just about twice of this, we'll use it in just a moment. Before we get there though, let's add some more flash. Or first things first, let's finish securing the hide here. Really biting into that, kind of smashing it down. And walking back, and that's not coming coming free on us. So we'll take that Crelex, and I'm going to split it in half. So we don't need a whole lot here. We are going to double it over anyway. So something like three or four of the bigger ones, and then a, a few of those smaller ones mixed in. Feather it a little bit. And then we're gonna estimate about, so again, the same thing, a two or so lengths. You can always trim this after the fact. So we're gonna secure that right behind the bead with a couple of quick securing wraps. And then we can pull back and wrap over top and sort of double that over. And that's just gonna help give a little bit of movement, a little, little more pop to the fly underneath and then we're going to go into the collar so a few things that are going to go into the collar here i mentioned we're going to use a little bit more pine squirrel don't always do this that first fly that you saw in the vise didn't have this underneath but i think it adds a dimension helps create a better profile so we'll take a small amount i really only want like one or two turns of this tied in and then we can create our dub loop to secure that material in right where that hides land take the thread up and out of the way and then we'll throw that material in to the dubbing loop like so secure it in I always like to manipulate it before I come back and trim that hide out, get it to where I want it to be. And you can pinch that thread, clip out the hide, and then give it a spin, like so. Now we're gonna take a little bit of wax onto my fingers so that I can sort of manipulate this rearward, get it tamed back slightly and then before I go to wrap what I like to do is I will position my finger right up against the flat side and what that allows me to do is sort of control it as I go around you see it wants to sort of spin on you as you start to make those first few wraps it wants to spin on you and you can kind of keep it in place get that first couple wraps in there and lay that down and then we will capture out that dubbing loop and go into the next material. So it's just adding a little bump of bulk there. We'll add some slopping, just like on a meat whistle. But I'm gonna pick these wisely. You can see some of the, usually slopping is pretty long. There's some even bigger ones in here. We don't want those giant ones. We wanna find the smaller ones when we're tying these flies. So that guy's gonna be a nice fit for this pattern and all I'm going to do is sort of comb that tip forward and then I want everything else kind of coming perpendicular off of the quill we can tie in that tip and clip out, clip out the extra and then we are going to go ahead and wrap that forward as well 
half hitch it, bob and cradle it, maybe a little more wax. And then I'm gonna pull them back as I wrap, trying to get those fibers to go rearward. Those first few ones are always the most difficult to, to tame again, to get to play along. We'll do a few wraps forward with this. All the way up to that bead, basically. Like so, one more in there. How about a nice bulky collar? And then we can grab that with our thread. It's a little bulkier collar than on the first one too, so you can play around with what you like there. Put that out. And get it all to lay down more so. Just a loose couple of wraps, not too much tension here. Just want them going all backwards. And then one final thing on this fly, some laser dubbing just to finish off the collar, add a little bit of extra contrasting color, a lighter material. So it's the Senyos in purple. And I'm just gonna take a bundle of that. I don't need a whole lot. We're gonna make a bit of a collar on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and card this. Pulling it out, getting them all to be aligned and trying to have them nice and lengthy. Get a little more there. Pull it, pull it through. Sort of fan it out. And I'm going to take it and lay it down and around. And then we're going to give it just a couple of loose wraps. No tension whatsoever. Big, loose, open wraps. And then I'll pull down into it. Massage that all rearward. More wax, not saliva. <laughs> I always want to go to saliva. There we are. A bonnet, like so. And once we sneak in front of it, we can take our whip finish tool and lock everything on in there. Come in and add your glue of choice. Clip out your thread, maybe take a brush, I'm gonna flip it over in the vise so that I have all the material available there to sort of comb out. And just brush it all back. Nice and uniform. But that is the micro meat whistle. So a great little streamer, it's a nice leech, it's a heavy fly, it gets down fast, great on the Euro rig as your lead bug, maybe it's your drop shot fly, nice one to have, all different species. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, check out the links below for all the materials used in this pattern, if you have any questions give us a call, avidmax.com and subscribe for more videos like this one. Have a great day.